music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song cause a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for you deserve though I'm weak and poor all I have is yours every single breath I'll bring you more than a song cause a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back, I'm coming back. I'll bring you more than a song. today and we have our basket of thanks that we're doing to, where we're collecting uh, food that uh, and donations that we're taking for the uh, ones over at Oakwood. We're partnering with Oakwood Elementary and uh, so they're due today, right? So it's sometime today that they need, if they're not here, we need to bring them in and so uh, keep that, you know, keep that in mind if you have left it at home or whatever to get it up here and uh, then also we have, we still have have more coats for Christ that that's also that we're collecting coats and uh, that we like I said we are partners with Oakwood Elementary and so we have you know we have a lot of extra coats that have come in today and uh, then that deadline is well that actually is tomorrow is it for the coats or Some of them just need to be here Wednesday morning by Wednesday morning so then they'll be that way they can still get taken where they're going to be taken and uh, so then we have a tear-off piece in our bulletin 
that if you wish to have a poinsettia put in the uh, uh, in the front in the church uh, so that uh, you know and it's for in memory of someone or in honor of someone and so just you know you can just pull off the little tear off fill it out and uh, then they'll order you know order those poinsettias and uh, I was thinking we had some there may have been a few uh, good news at noon that we are serving on November the 21st and so that you know and it's saying that if you need some information you know to contact Joe and Donna Meadows and, uh, and I think that that is all of our for right now for the month of uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow is food pantry day Oh, is that on here? Oh, I do see that. November the 18th, we are serving at the South Hall Food Pantry. And uh, and I get and every, I think most people know that it is actually on our property that it's right here. And so if you want to check into that, that you'll have that's just different ways that we can serve. And uh, then um, is there anything else? Anyone? Any other announcements that are pressing? Sure. Okay. The flowers are from Brooke and Andrews. Oh yes, I know they're beautiful too. Those, that was the pretty. Those were the prettiest arrangements. That from Brooke and Andrew's wedding was yesterday, and so the flowers were from their wedding, and so that's the, so we can thank them, you know, and, and and know that now they have got married. So and it was it was beautiful service. So. <clears throat> And uh, anyhow, the, I felt like that today the scripture that came up is something that I, many of us have heard, but I feel like it seems like it's more timely than it has ever, the fact that it showed up today, and it is in Mark, normally I pick a psalm, but since you chose a psalm, I <laughs> went for one of the other ones, but the, and I probably would have done this one anyway, just because I felt like how, when these books are planned, you know, like two and three years ahead, they run on a, you know, that they usually plan their stuff about a three-year schedule. And how God already knew that we needed this scripture. And it is Mark 13, and it's 1 through 8. <clears throat> and it said, the title at the top for mine says, The Signs of the End of the Age. And it says, as he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples, now this of course is talking about Jesus, one of his disciples said to him, look teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. How many people that we've got so much deception going on? Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. And they had said, I don't even know, I was telling Lizzie this morning, she was talking about the Christmas trees. You know how that her husband was wanting to get a live Christmas tree and get it from, you know, one of the areas like in North Carolina where they have been hit with these hurricanes and uh, trying to do that. And I go, well, did you even hear the part about the pecans? That they said that I think they said it takes 10 years for a, pe a pecan tree to produce fruit. And so those that we also lost the majority of our pecan. Talk about famines. These are, I think what it is, we think big famines. We're not thinking about little famines, like little things that are going to be missing, you know. And so thinking of it that way. But I thought, how appropriate is this today? And uh, so, and I thought about also that the end of the age. That here we are, beginning Advent season. That we're that this is talking about looking forward to Christ's birth. But we're also supposed to be looking forward. He has already come for us. He already came. But he's coming back for us to redeem the people that are looking for him. And so just like I said, I thought, how did this show up 
like that. Then it was just tucked away and then there it was for this, for such a time as this. And so uh, if you'll go on and bow your heads, Lord Jesus, we do want to thank you that you always show up right on time, that you put those little snippets of scriptures so that you can just, so that it can just uh, quench our thirst, that it can give us knowledge, that just to uh, make sure that it gives us that assurance. We have that assurance that you're coming back for us. You are coming back for your church, for the people that are looking for you. And uh, just uh, help us that we don't become deceived. That's why we have Pastor Emmy here this morning, so that she can bring us your word and tell us what your word says, not make up something else that is of her own mind that or that, you know, so that we don't go astray, so that we are your sheep that are following your word. And just bless the service this morning. Bless Pastor Emmy. And uh, we do want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you that, that Brooke and Andrew did have such a wonderful, it was such a beautiful wedding. It was a wonderful, sir. Everything about it was wonderful. And we do want to thank you that, you know, people still want to get married. It was a, even the pastor said that, that this is a beautiful thing because lots of people aren't doing this anymore. They're not following your word. And we do want to thank you for all you've done. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand and sing.
morning as we join together and affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. Church family, what is it that we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. I wanted to give you two quick updates. Um, and really their prayer requests, which is appropriate because right now we're entering into a time of prayer um, as well as a time of thanksgiving. So my two prayer requests today, one is for Walt and Charlotte. Um, both of them had falls this week. Um, so Walt fell, I guess, Friday last week, week well, before last. Her fall was that she kind of hurt herself trying to help him. Okay. So, yeah, it was like she sort of fell on him trying to keep it. So it was, yeah. Well, okay, because that's He's not what... told not to do that anymore. Well, that's, no. that, that is not what he communicated to me. He said she got dizzy getting out of the bed. Oh, no, she did do that too. Yeah, she, so... That one, yeah, she slid off. Yes. They've, they've both had falls. She they've both that. tried to help each other. We've had conversation. Yeah, she did. Um, yes. So that was because she was hurting from the other. Yeah. 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 So um, continue to pray for them. I am thankful for this church and the love and the ministry that you give to them um, by going out and visiting often, helping fill gas into the tank, um, helping pick them up off the floor, um, as well as. Um, keeping them in your prayers. But I did want to let you know that's why they were not here last week and that's probably why they're not here this week. Um, but I did want to make you aware. The other update is on Alice. Um, I mentioned last week that I had not said anything. I didn't know if I was supposed to or not say something. I needed to talk to Janice. And um, I did share with you that she had, she fell. It's been almost a month ago. And um, she had surgery. She broke her femur. That's a hard bone to break. Yeah. Um, and so Janice and I have been talking, and um, we do have something circulating uh, for you to take a look at. Um, and then I will be meeting up with Janice. I'm pretty confident that Alice doesn't watch the replay. Um, but I'll be meeting up with Jan Janice this week um, to give that to her, along with a small gift um, from Mark and I. Um, she will not be, they are not even considering having her come back this way until mid-January. Um, so I just want to kind of let you know what the expectations are so that we can continue to pray for her um, for long-term healing. Um, she's doing well. She is in Alabama. She is with her son. Um, and Janice is going back and forth every other week to spend time with her. So she'll be going back Thanksgiving week, which is why I'll be meeting up with her this week. Um, I missed her just barely um, this week. She told me she was going to be there till noon. I had made arrangements and then she said, oh, one of my meetings got canceled, so I'm heading out. And I was like, okay, see you in two weeks. So then we need to go on and pass this. Yeah, we need to make sure that everybody in the choir loft had a chance, and we'll continue to pass that around. Um, but just be in prayer for Alice. Um, and then um, I just wanted to lift up a prayer of thanksgiving. Mark's eyes are healing really well. He goes back for his follow-up on December 5th. And so um, I just wanted to let you know, he's doing great. And he's like, man, I had no idea everything was so crystal clear. So just blessings um, for him and for his recovery. Um, anything else that we can praise or be in prayer for? Great. Yes. I've got my annual physical with my doctor tomorrow. Okay. I pray for a good diagnosis. Yeah, no news is great, right? I love being a boring patient. Um, so that'll. I'd like to see the doctor. Uh, they were gonna. I had an appointment with him, but he's not gonna be available tomorrow. But I have to get the appointment over with this month for my biometric screen. So they uh, made me an appointment with a nurse practitioner so that I can get my 
biometric screening done by the deadline, which is the last of this month. So yep. So we're going to schedule it with the doctor next month, but I couldn't wait that long. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Oh. Go ahead. The uh, lady sitting on the flower stand is Mary, and uh, the visual uh, for the worship planner had asked for a lady, a woman. Mary is the one that we we're fixing to walk behind her to to the cradle for baby Jesus. So. Uh, it was appropriate to have a woman. Very appropriate. Very. And uh, that this time of year is a blessing. It's, I, I know everyone gets strung out about it, but it is not. It is a true blessing if we walk the right way. Yep. And don't forget the reason that we're going to the cradle. Yep. Uh, Gideon has been uh, like he's having a really hard time teething it's like the back teeth that are coming in and she's taking him to the doctor and it's not you know it's not a cold they just keep saying it's his teeth because they can't find any but he's very he's struggling yeah <clears throat> teething is so hard it, oh man I remember and I now remember. he's got the runny nose to go with it oh. where you have that yeah so like she knows he's sick but he's not so. yeah Brandy I'm blessed to have my 97 year old grandmother. Um, she, but she was taken to St. Mary's this week with double pneumonia. Oh. So um, the update this morning was um, she was. They took her off um, oxygen to just do room oxygen, and she was handling it pretty well. So if all goes well, she'll go home like middle of the week. But um, uh, Levon Smith is running. Okay. Anybody? Yes. I had a text from a friend this morning that she had gotten a text from her daughter that today is uh, National Creamy Day. I did not know there was such a day. You know, there's days for everything. And I appreciate that so much because thinking back a little over two years ago, I know. We had the creamy, and now he's just... He's growing like a weed. He certainly is. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a praise that, you know, that there is a day set aside. I mean, there's such a day set aside for everything now. I'm going to set one aside for Joe. <laughs> 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 I want one too. <laughs> <laughs> David's requested I one. I want a day okay. too. <laughs> <laughs> but this friend also had a granddaughter that mm -hmm. was a creamy, just about two pounds, and now she is older than Grayson, but she has just really grown. So I oh yeah, my niece, my niece was a preemie. Um, I will never forget the day that I got the call from my brother-in-law saying that my sister-in-law was at the hospital and they could not stop her labor. And uh, I was the one that was blessed to call my mother-in-law and let her know that her daughter was in the hospital. And Alexandria was born at 26 weeks. Um, so yeah, so the I- The medical center celebrates with the day that they bring the pre all preemies that yeah. were preemies that have grown up to uh, be children. Mm -hmm. They bring all the preemies back for a day of celebration. Yep. I said we had a friend that uh, her baby was uh, 2.4 ounces, two pounds four ounces, and uh, the thing is, he turned he he is six foot four, and he turned 20 years old. So oh yeah, that 20 years ago, you know, that he's turned that you would never have known that he was, you know, you wouldn't know my niece was a preemie either. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. I'm telling you, it's yeah. amazing. Um, prayer and modern medicine and the gifts that God has given us. That we have access to modern medicine. Yeah. That's a praise. That is a praise. Anybody else? Yes, Joe. The rain and the fall weather. Rain and fall weather. Hallelujah. And I, I am just going to throw this out because my daughter will be happy. Hallelujah for the dogs. <laughs> I know. 
sorry for my Tennessee fans, but hallelujah for the dogs. I'm sorry, but that is where my, my daughter is at, and that is where our money is going, and so I have to pull for the dogs. I am not a dogs fan. I told you all that when I first came here, and it is shifting because that is, that is what we do as a family. <laughs> we root for one another. Um, anybody else? All right, then let us go to our God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, God of love, you created us to love you and one another. God, help us to take a moment to pause, settle our giggles, and remember your goodness and knowledge and your presence among us. God, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, both great and small. And God, we confess that sometimes we are limited. We become focused on what we lack or what we think we need and fail to see the abundance before us. God, help us to slow down as we go into a really busy time of year. Help us to slow down, open our eyes, and recognize your hand at work in our daily lives. May we be aware of the extras, these God moments, these God winks, these glimpses of beauty, the touches of kindness, and the moments of peace that remind us of your love. God, as we continue to worship you today, prepare our hearts, quiet our restless minds. May your spirit move among us, stirring within us a deeper gratitude and greater awareness of your presence. God, teach us to live lives marked by thanksgiving and praise, not just for what you have done, but for who you are. You are faithful, you are loving, and God, you are true. Empower us, God, to be instruments of your grace in the world. Let our lives be a testament of your goodness and a light to those who need hope. We ask for all of this in the name of Jesus who taught us to give thanks and praise in all things and the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Shut 
Holy, I want to see you. We sing Holy, Holy, Holy. We cry Holy, Holy, Holy. You are Holy, Holy, Holy. We want to see you. Our scripture reading today com comes from Psalm 100. We'll be looking at the first five verses. Let us hear the word of God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know the Lord, he is God, <clears throat> and it is he who made us. And we are his, we are his people and the sheep of pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, thanks be to God. Are you familiar with Sherlock Holmes? I got some wide eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, Sherlock has a faithful companion named Dr. Watson. But it's Holmes' keen power of observation that has solved countless crimes. Yet few of us know that Holmes thought deduction and observation were even more necessary in religion. Tucked away in the adventures of the Naval Treaty, Holmes is found studying a rose. Now, in what you might think of as your best Watson voice, imagine Watson narrating this. There is nothing in which deduction is so necessary as in religion. And he points out that the rose is an extra a gift of beauty beyond what we need for survival. Holmes understands that such extras point us to the goodness and generosity of God. As a church, we have been sharing stories of moments when we've seen God at work in our lives. We've been doing that every Sunday since I joined you Today, I want us to continue to think about that, but I want us to look more closely at the extras in our life. Those moments of grace, of beauty, and of provision that remind us of God's love and presence. Together, we can learn to see more clearly, to give thanks more deeply, and to live more fully aware of his work in our daily lives. The Israelites knew that it was what it was like to rely on God's daily provisions. The Feast of Shakot, or the Feast of Booths, was a time to celebrate the end of the harvest and to remember how God provided for them during the 40 years in the wilderness. For 40 years they wandered with nothing but God's presence and his provisions. Manna, water from the rock, and protection. When they reached the promised land, they marked this time with a festival to give thanks for both the tangible, tangible harvest as well as the spiritual harvest of God's care and guidance. I know we're a couple weeks away from Thanksgiving and you may be going, what is she preaching about this for today? Well, it was in the lectionary and I thought it's never too early to give thanks. So what about us? What harvests has God provided in our lives? I think many of you have shared stories with me about God's faithfulness. 
Maybe it was a friend who reached out in a moment of loneliness. A door that opened when it seemed like every path was blocked. Maybe it was a moment when somebody needed a ride and you answered the call. Maybe it was somebody who needed to be picked up off the floor and you were able to go and help. These, these moments are modern day manna. They're tangible signs that God is still providing. I'm gonna pause for a moment and I want you to reflect what God has done for you in your wilderness. What extras has he placed in your life? Psalm 113 tells us that God stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He is not a distant observer, but an intimate provider. He lifts the needy from the ash heap and he cares for those who seem forgotten. This is the God who gives roses and manna. When we pause and reflect, we begin to see these moments everywhere, not just in grand miracles, but in the quiet whispers of God's grace. Cultivating a life of gratitude begins with awareness. Too often we rush through our days missing God's fingerprints on our life. John Wesley taught us that gratitude is a means of grace. Gratitude is a means of grace. It transforms us, opening our hearts to God and deepening our relationship with one another. When we become more aware of God's work, we begin to see his hands in our conversations, in nature, and in even and even in the challenges that we face day in and day out. Consider this story shared by a member of a congregation that I know, and it was shared with their approval. They were feeling deeply lonely, unsure of their steps, when an unexpected phone call came from a friend and it changed everything. In that moment, they knew that they were no longer alone. How many of us have experienced something similar? I was on a live chat the other day and this person said, I had, was responding back to something that they had said, and they said, Emmy, you always come back. I might post something, and you always come back and say something, and it's just what I need in that moment. And I thought, okay. I know this person isn't a Christian. But I told her, I said, you know I'm a pastor. <coughs> and I said, I call these moments... God winks. In chrysalis, which is the youth version of Emmaus, we call them chrysalis moments. You can call them whatever you want, but they're moments when we see God at work. How many of us have experienced something similar? A word of encouragement at just the right time. A solution to a problem that might have seemed impossible. These moments, they're not coincidences. They are evidence of God's intimate care. Wesley emphasized prevenient grace. That's the grace that goes before us, preparing the way. When we become more aware of God's work, we begin to see that what he has, that he has been there all along. Working even when we didn't recognize it. Awareness is the first step to gratitude. And gratitude transforms how we live 
and how we can relate to God and to one another. To cultivate this awareness, I invite you to try a simple practice. In your bulletin, you have a place for sermon notes. It's okay for you not to take notes, but take that. And every day this week, keep a gratitude journal. Each day, write down one way that you've seen God at work. Just one. It might be a small kindness. A moment of peace. An unexpected blessing. As you do this, you'll begin to see more and more of God's presence. And your heart will naturally overflow with gratitude. It's funny how when you start to actually pay attention, how much you see is so intentional and not just happenstance. There is a subtle but important difference between thanksgiving and praise. We thank God for what he has done, and we praise him for who he is. We give him thanks for what he's done, and we praise him for who he is. Psalm 100 captures both aspects, calling us to praise the Lord who is exalted above the nations and to give thanks for his care for the lowly and the needy. This balance is essential for a life of gratitude. Sometimes it's easy to thank God for the big things. A new job, a healing, a reconciliation. But what about the small things? Some of the small things that we have may be big to someone else. I was talking to a young lady earlier this morning and she said, Emmy, we used to foster kids. And I asked one year, what was the best Christmas gift that you got last year? And the child said, I got my own toothbrush and my own toothpaste. That's here. That's here in our community. That year when she gave them Christmas gifts, you know what they were most excited about? Underwear and socks. Things that we take and don't see as a blessing because for us, those are things that we can provide for ourselves. There's another story of a woman in a nursing home who gave thanks for the two good teeth that she had because they were matched to allow her to chew. It might make us smile for a moment. Gratitude finds meaning even in the smallest gifts. As a church, we've been sharing moments of God's work in our lives. I encourage you to continue to practice. I mean, look at the beautiful jackets that we're going to be able to provide to students at Oakwood. Think about the baskets where a family will be able to have a full meal and their bellies will be full for probably several days. We have to practice not just today, but every day. And this congregation's really good about that. When we cultivate a habit of gratitude, we find that every moment is a gift. Every breath is a grace. John Wesley believed that a thankful heart is the mark of a mature Christian. Gratitude moves us beyond self-focus and compels us to love and to serve others. It shifts our mindset from, I deserve this, to, wow, I am blessed by this. 
it reminds us that every good thing comes from God's hand and calls us to share our blessings generously. So as we approach Thanksgiving, and even beyond Thanksgiving, let us take time to reflect on the roses, the extras that are in our life. The extras, the signs of God's extravagant love and grace. Let us cultivate awareness and give thanks for every blessing, great and small. May our lives be a testament of God's goodness, and may we continue to see him at work all around us, in our homes, in our drives, as we walk around in our community. Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift our voices in gratitude and praise for your goodness. Open our eyes to see your work around us in the big moments and especially in the small. God, thank you for every gift, every grace, every moment that points to your love. May we live each day in awareness and gratitude, reflecting your goodness in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's all stand. <laughs> to serve. We've got the South Hall Food Pantry on Monday. We have good news at noon on Thursday. But don't forget to write down the things that you see where God is at work. I'm not going to ask you to give them to me next week unless you feel compelled as a way of saying thanks. I'm just asking that you be aware as we prepare for a time of thanksgiving not just for our freedom and for this beautiful country that we live in, but for the God winks, the chrysalis moments, the God moments that are in our lives every single day and with every breath. 
Go in peace. <laughs>